80. In a titration of cyanide ion, 28.72 milliliters of a 0.0100 molar AgNO3 solution is added before precipitation begins. The reaction of Ag plus with Cn minus goes to completion, producing the AgCn2 minus complex. Precipitation of the solid AgCn takes place when excess Ag plus is added to the solution above the amount needed to complete the formation of AgCn2 minus. How many grams of NaCn were in the original sample? Okie dokie. So, um, for this question, I went to the back of the textbook to find out what the Kf value is for this complex ion, the AgCn2 minus. And it turns out that the Kf value is a really, really, really big number. Now remember, when we have K values that are really, really, really big, that means that at equilibrium, you're going to have basically mostly products, right? And they did tell us that the reaction of Ag plus and Cn minus goes to completion and we're producing that complex ion. So if we just write a balanced equation, we have these two ions. Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> I love it when they give me the charges because then I don't, I don't have to think, I just write them down, right? So Ag plus plus Cn minus is gonna come to equilibrium to form that complex ion, AgCn2 minus. And then just make sure that this equation is balanced. You have two cyanides, so I'm gonna have to put a two in front of here. Now, do we care about the states in this problem? No, they're all aqueous, they're all charges, so, but in this case, I don't really, I'm not worried about that. Now, just going back to what we said before, remember the Kf, means that if it's a really, really high number, that means at equilibrium, you're gonna have mostly your products, which means that all of these, chances are if it's, a, you know, if it's in the right proportion, you're gonna have very, very, very low amounts of reactants and all of it is going to be your products. So let's just see what we started off with. They did tell us that we had 28.72 milliliters, right? of a 0 0.0100 molarity of, who is this, AgNO3. Now, AgNO3 is not in this balanced equation. However, remember, because of your solubility rules, all nitrates, which is any NO3s, these are always aqueous. All your nitrate compounds are always going to dissolve 100% of the time, so this is AQ. So I know that this compound is gonna break between its two ions. And the two ions are Ag plus and Cl, and Cl minus. <laughs> it's just like, I'm just on like autopilot, right? Ag plus and NO3 minus. Okay, now do any of these match up with the equation here? Yeah, seems like the common ion is the Ag plus. I have one right here and I have one right here. So in order to find out how much Ag plus I need to use here, I gotta find out how much was here. Well, seems like I can just use my mole ratios, right? And I could basically turn them into molarity ratios. So in this case, remember there's one Ag, right? In um, one Ag in one whole AgNO3. So if we do a mole ratio, it looks like for every one mole of the compound, I'm gonna have the same amount of moles. I'm gonna have one mole of Ag. So the question is, well, how many moles of Ag out of three do I have? This is the information that I'm given. I'm given milliliters and a molarity. Remember that formula, molarity equals moles divided by liters. And if I wanna solve for moles, I would just times these two, right? So if I just rearrange that formula, I'm just gonna say that the moles that I have is equal to molarity times liters. I have the molarity value, that's the 0 0.0100, but the thing is I don't have liters, I have mils. But that's an easy conversion, right? Milliliters to liters, you just divide by 1,000. So I'll just put that there, divide by 1,000. So this would be 0 0.02872. Maybe if I can, I'll just bring this over a little bit. 0.2872, and that's liters. So I'm just going to take that number and times it by 0 0.02872. And that's gonna be equal to how many moles I have. 
So let's see, looks like it's going to be 0 0.002872 or actually three zeros. Yeah, three zeros. So I think that this is probably better if I just write it in scientific notation. 2.872. Times 10 to the negative fourth. And keep in mind, that was the moles of the AgNO3. But by just what we said, if we have one AgNO3, there's only one Ag in AgNO3. So the mole ratio has to be the same, which means that how many moles of Ag plus did you have? You just had the same number, 2.872 uh, 2 times 10 to the negative fourth moles. And now I'm going to bring that number over here. So I have 2.8. 872 times 10 to the negative fourth. Okay. Well, remember, assuming that, you know, this value is so large, we're roughly not going to have anything here and everything is going to get converted into the product. But in order to convert into the product, you have to have CN minus. Well, if we want to get rid of all of these moles, I would have to use the same mole ratio, right? So that we don't really have a limiting reagent here. But we just use our ratios. There was one Ag and two Cn minuses. So if it's a one to two relationship, I should have two times more cyanide ions. So I take this number, the 2.872 times 10 to the negative fourth, and I just times by two. And that will be the total moles that you would need of the CN minus. So I get 5.744 times 10 to the negative fourth moles of CN minus. And basically, they're saying how many grams of NaCN? Well, we're at the stage where we now have moles of CN minus that had to have been used. But we just have to go from moles to grams. Now keep in mind, just look at your mole ratio, right? If we're looking for NaCN, this is also a aqueous solution because all group one ions, if they have your ionic compound, that will always be aqueous. And this will break down into Na plus and CN minus. But the same idea, for every one NaCN, you only had one Cn minus. So the moles that were here, which is 5.744 times 10 to the negative fourth, since it's a one to one to one relationship, the moles of NaCN is 5.744 times 10 to the negative fourth moles. And now I can just go from moles to grams. So we don't have to do dimensional analysis at this stage of the game, right? We could just do the easy conversion, right? Going from moles to grams of NaCN, right? Moles to grams, all we have to do is just times by the molar mass. So I got to look on the periodic table for what is the molar mass of NaCN. So let's see, NaCN, I got 22.99 plus 12.01 plus a nitrogen, 14.01. And I got 49.01. So I'm going to take that number, times it by 5.744. I'm sent to the negative fourth. And I guess three sig figs. So 0 0.0282. So 0 0.0282 grams of NaCN, and that's, that's how many grams of the sodium cyanide you needed in order to react completely with that amount of the AgNO3. And this equation, or this problem, is done. What do you think? I really hope this one helped you out. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel. And if, and if you want to, please tell your friends about this channel. Tell your classmates. Um, just spread the word, just gets the word out there. Thank you so much. And I'll be talking to you later. Okay. Bye-bye.